Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has held back the rains. And in our area, what now should be full of rain, we're still feeling like it's the middle of summer. And our clouds are covered with smoke because of the fires that have come. So we have come to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to pray the salat al istisqa. And to do the dua that we should be doing to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the rains. And to think about what it is that is causing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hold back the rains. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Throughout the khutbah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the sunnah of istisqa, he would be repeating astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Why? In the Eid, we repeat the takbirat. Because for the Eid, it's a day of grandifying and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're reminding ourselves of the glory and the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by repeating the takbirs. And in the khutbah of the Jum'ah, it's a day of reminder of taqwa and a reminder of dhikr. And so you hear the mentions of taqwa and you hear dhikr in the khutbah of the Jum'ah. But in the khutbah of the istisqa, this is a time where we're reminding ourselves not about the future, and how we should be and how we should have taqwa. We're reminding ourselves about the past, what we have done. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for what we have done. Because it's because of our sins that he holds back the rains. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْلَا أَشْيَاخُ الرُّكَعُنْ وَأَطْفَالُ الرُّدَّعُنْ وَبَأَهَائِمُ الرُّتَّعُنْ نَصُبَّ عَلَيْكُمُ الْعَذَابَ صَبَّ if it weren't for the old men and the old women who are making ruku' to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the children who are nursing and the animals who are e just eating just to survive then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have poured upon us adab, poured upon us punishment because those figures, the old and the young and the animals they're not in a state of sin and for the children they're not even sinning and it's because of their sinlessness that we are being protected. But when the adab does come down, when punishments do come down, it's a reminder to us that we're causing it. Because we do believe in a spiritual connection between our actions and the effects on earth. And we're reminding ourselves that to ask Allah for the rain, we're not going to come out here and, and promise to do so much good in the future. We're going to remind ourselves and ask Allah to forgive us for the past. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. There's even pictures in the paper of animals that have been burned by the fire. There was a picture of a raccoon completely burned and completely blinded by the fire. It didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. So it might be our sins, our sins as individuals, as communities, as nations, that are causing the adab to come down. Now we can't say for sure why anything happens, it's it's in the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When something happens, when the rains are held and a drought is caused, and all of the, 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 the grass is dried to a point and the dirt is dried to a point that it's a tinder box, and one spark can ignite a huge flame, that might be as a punishment, it might be as a trial, it might be as a tribulation. So it can be a punishment and that's what we're trying to affect. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do something just because he chose, he can do that. We are in his mulk and we submit to that. But if any of the adab that is coming down is because of something that we have done as individuals, as communities, as the ummah, as the whole nation, we're coming out to make amends. And this is why the Prophet wasallam, before coming out to the musalla of the Eid would tell people to give sadaqah. And that sadaqah is a kafara to expiate things that we may have done. He would also remind people to make amends with people that they have hurt. To make amends, to connect with the people that they have hurt and turn back to things. And if we were to follow the sunnah completely, the imam would be doing this for three days before this prayer. To remind the jama'ah, before we come out and raise our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for the rains, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Before we do that, we should be giving sadaqah and we should be fasting. And for those of you who have fasted, thank you. Thank you for preparing us as a jama'ah, preparing us spiritually to make this dua, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the heavens for us and to bring down the rains. And to make amends, the Imam would remind people to make amends with the people that you have hurt. We have to remember that our deen is not just about ibadah. 
It's not just about worshiping and performing and presenting good actions of worship. It's also about treating other people in a fair way. And every time we mistreat people and we hurt somebody else or we take somebody else's right, then that's one more thing that's counted against us that might be affecting what's happening in the environment. Could there be global climate change? Yes, there could be. Could it also be beyond just the physical answers that they're saying, the pollution from the cars and the air? Could it be a spiritual connection that's call out causing the global climate change? That's what we're saying. And we're saying we're here to make amends, to try to ask for a change in that by saying astaghfirullah and asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. So to make tawbah and to make right what we have wronged people. So let's take a moment and think about anybody in our lives that we may have hurt and to make an intention now to make it right with that person. We're preparing ourselves to ask Allah for the rain, but we are asked to, rem to remember about why it is that the rains are being held. Think about that. We have to make a, 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 an amends and make an inventory and think if we have hurt somebody to work towards changing that. According to some of the ulama, hurting another person, wronging another person is worse than leaving the salah. As Muslims, we should be praying. And if we're not praying, we could be adding to the sin that's causing the adab to be coming down. But at the same time, in terms of our mu'amala with other people, are we treating people right? Are we making an inventory of people that we have hurt and see if we're making amends? Are we taking into account the companies and the communities and the nations that also might be adding to this? We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَفَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ That corruption has spread in the lands and in the oceans because of the hands of what people have done, because of what we have done. What we do as human beings is changing the earth. So even before pollution, there's something beyond that that's the greed of the human being at the individual level, at the corporate level, at the state level, at the national level, the greed that's fueling the productions or whatever else that might be causing the global climate change that's affecting our weather in this way. And if it's not, if we're not even going to subscribe to that theory, then we know as Muslims, whether or not we subscribe to that, we do know that our spiritual state can affect the environment. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And so because we know that things that we're doing can be affecting. We have to be voices for change. We have to change things about ourselves and make amends, but also take our governments to account for what they may be doing to cause this. Because they may be doing something in another part of the world that causes innocent people to be affected. Allah tells us in the Quran to fear a tribulation. Fear a tribulation, a test, something that could happen to you that affects the people who didn't directly do the things. So we're talking about us possibly doing something that affects something that, that affects the environment and that affects us. But what if we do something or another person on another step, part of the world does something that's affecting people here? That's what Allah is reminding us about. That people could be doing things. They could be sinning. We could be falling short in our ibadah, short in our mu'amala that affects other people in other areas. And so what part are we playing in possibly causing that? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Are we taking our communities to account? Are we taking the corporations to account? Are we taking the states to account? Are we taking the governments to account? Are we taking them to account of where they're spending our taxes? Brothers and sisters, I remind myself and I remind all of you, and I'm not here standing as the most God-fearing amongst you. I'm not the most uh, taqwa, have, uh, I don't have the most taqwa amongst you. We know that the ajr and the reward of this salah is going to be raised amongst the person who has the most taqwa here. We don't know who that is. But I can say I'm not that person. So I'm not speaking to you as a, the person of most taqwa. I'm speaking to you as a person who's coming to make amends and to right the wrongs that I have done and that we have done. But we have to be voices to speak against ourselves, but also against our, our governments and be voices of truth. If they're spending our tax dollars for war and for killing the innocents, then we have to be voices. We can't just sit back and benefit from the amount of wealth 
that America and the Bay Area has without calling our governments to account for how they're spending our tax dollars. Because maybe it's the fire that they're dropping from the heavens in other parts of the world that's causing a fire to be dropped in our parts of the world. So we have to take account. We can't just sit here. We can't just be Muslims in the United States of America and not speak be voices for the truth and ask people to take account that while our infrastructure of the cities is failing and the bridges are failing and the schools are being closed down and the opioid ep epidemic, but there's always money for war. We have to be voices to remind our community at the national level, we don't want our money for war. And it could be that that's causing this. It could be the dua of somebody on the other side of the world that's causing this. We don't know that, but we want to be voices for change and to stop that, but starting with ourselves. Yes, we ask, ask where our tax money is going. We ask where our own money is going. We ask ourselves where we're spending our time. And are we using the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the proper way? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Are we using our hands in a way that would please Allah? Are we using our eyes in a way that would please Allah? Are we using our ears in a way that would please Allah? Are we using our tongue in a way that would please Allah? Are we using our feet in a way that would please Allah? Are we always using our clothes in a way that would please Allah? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam set for example of Sunnah al Istisqa that unlike Eid where we wear the best clothing to remind ourselves of the blessings of Allah in the Sunnah of Istisqa we should wear our most worn out clothing and our tattered clothing to humble us and to come to the place of Istisqa with our heads lowered in shame and when we wear our old and tattered clothing, we remember, we remind ourselves what our spiritual clothing really looks like. Because as long as we have the nice, the fancy cars and the fancy housing and the fancy clothes, we could delude ourselves that our spiritual state is also fancy. But on istisqa, when we're wearing our old and tattered clothing, we remember, remind ourselves that our spiritual foe might be worn and tattered and we need to patch it up with, with istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. We know that is the solution. Nuh alayhi salam, when he came to his people and when they were in the state of worst of sin and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping our idols, what did he tell them? Astaghfiru rabbakum wa innahu kana ghaffara yursil as-sama'a alaykum midrara wa yumdidkum bi amwalim wa banina Make us of any rains because we know that if Allah wants to wipe out a people or wipe out an area, He can make the rain so heavy that it causes floods. Last year we saw that in Santa Barbara. After the fires, rains came down so heavy that the earth wasn't able to soak it up and it, or the earth had already been scorched and the plants that had, the roots of the plants that were holding back the earth weren't there and so it caused flooding. It caused flooding. And the people of Noah were wiped out by too much rain. And so He was asking them, or reminding them to make it istighfar that Allah would send them, put, uh, upon them beneficial rain and that's what we're asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the dua of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's ghaythan mughithan it's a rain that's beneficial because we don't want a rain that's going to cause havoc and Nuh alayhi salam reminded his people make istighfar and Allah will give you the rains and in addition to giving you the rains we'll give you wealth and we'll give you we'll give you children we'll give you everything you want just turn in istighfar to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn in istighfar to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah will change this and that's what we're asking for in the dua that the scholars have narrated we're asking for a ghayth an ajilan la ajilan a ghayth that happens now not in the future the weather forecast has it for Thursday or for Wednesday. We're asking for the rains now because this is what we need. We need to bring down the smoke with the droplets of rain that's coming down from the heavens of the uh, coming down from the heavens and out of the mercy of Allah. One of the names of rain is mercy is rahma. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the first rain would go out and show a part of his ar arm or body and allow that rain to touch his body because it's a part of rahmah and it's so close to the amr of Allah, it's so close to the matter of Allah, Allah is the one who sends the rains. And that's what we're asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for any person who was having a shoulder cloth, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would turn it by holding this, this shoulder and this shoulder, and I will turn around and you'll see it, but you turn it around and it'll turn the shoulder cloth from the inside out to ask Allah to change our condition, to go from one state to another state, just like the inside of the, the rida 
it's facing the body, now it's facing the outside of the body, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin the dua. So you can be, uh, stay seated while we turn and face the qibla and make, make the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. We all should be doing istighfar, deep istighfar, and not just on our tongues, but in our hearts. And with firm resolution that we are asking, whether we are telling ourselves that we will change those things in our life. We will make true istighfar. We will make true tawbah. We will make tawbah tan nasuha. A true tawbah that we will never return to those things. And that we will return the rights of the people that we have taken. And through this istighfar, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change our condition. اللهم اسقنا غيثا مغيثا هنيئا غدقا عاجلا غير آجلا مجللا صحا طبقا دائما او الله bless us with abundant and present pleasant rainwater that will deliver us from this calamity immediately rather than delayed ya Allah one that fills the entire horizon horizon and pounds hard on the earth ya Allah completely covering our lands ya Allah Lasting as long as it is needed, Ya Allah. Allahumma aghithna. Allahumma aghithna. Allahumma aghithna. Oh Allah, save us. Oh Allah, save us. Oh Allah, save us. Allahumma sqina. Allahumma sqina. Allahumma sqina. Oh Allah, give us water. Give us rains from the heaven. Send us down your mercy, Ya Allah. Ajilan, na ajilan. Now and not in the future. Allahumma sqina. Ghaithan mughitha. مريء مريعا نافعا غير ضار يا الله عاجلا غير آجل يا الله اللهم اسقنا غيثا مغيثا هنيئا مريءا مريعا غدقا مجلا عاما طبقا سحا دائما يا الله اللهم اسقنا الغيث والله send us down the غيث Send us down this ghayth, this rain that is a help, a source of help, Ya Allah. That is a source of rahma, Ya Allah. That is close to your matter, Ya Allah. وَلَا تَجْعَلْنَا مِنَ الْقَارِطِينَ Oh Allah, don't make us from those who are left with no answer, Ya Allah. Allahumma inna bil'ibadi wal-bilaadi wal-baha'imi wal-khalqi min al-lawai wal-jahdi min al-lawai wal-jahdi wal-dhanki ma la nashku illa ilayk. Oh Allah, in, in the, amongst your servants and amongst your land and amongst your animals and amongst all of the creation are tribulations and struggles and pressure that we don't have any source from delivery except from you, Ya Allah. Allahumma ambit lana zara. Oh Allah, make the plants grow. Wa adirra lana dara. And make the udders be filled with milk. Wa asqina min barakat is sama. And give us drink from the barakah of the heavens, Ya Allah. Wa ambit lana min barakat al ard. And give us plants from the barakah of the earth. Allahumma rafa'an anna al-jahda wal-ju'a wal-ura. Oh Allah, remove from us struggles and, and hunger and, 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 and not having things to cover us. Waqshif anna min al-bala'i ma la yakshifuhu ghayrak. And remove from us the tribulation that only you can remove from us, Ya Allah. Allahumma inna nastaghfiruka. Oh Allah, we ask, we are turning in repentance to you, Allah, Ya Allah. Inna ka kunta ghaffara. You are the ghaffar, you are the source of forgiveness, and you are the only one who can forgive us. Fa'arsil is samaa alayna midraran, oh Allah. Send upon us the heavens with rain. Ajilan la ajilan. Fa'arsil is samaa alayna midraran, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Arsil is Sama, send down the rain, Ya Allah, wa natubu ilayka, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, natubu ilayka. And tahawad ya ilayka, Ya Allah, bi tawad nasuha, Ya Allah. We have turned in repentance to you, Ya Allah. Until the ten of so high that we will not go back to what we were doing, Ya Allah. We will respect your blessings, Ya Allah. We will respect your ibad, Ya Allah. We will respect the humble, Ya Allah. We will respect the rights. We turn. Aghithna, Ya Allah. Aghithna, Ya Allah.
العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك لعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا من شاء ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفي ونيسرك لليسر فذكر نفعة الذكر سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيى قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل توثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذبت ثمود بطغواها إذ بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها فلا يخاف عقباها الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله